ever seen a great football player or watched a famous cricketer? Or maybe someone who was amazing at playing the keyboard or the piano or maybe the guitar or any other musical instrument or a great singer and you thought to yourself, wow, I wish I could do that. Well, my dear children, you certainly can. All it requires is a little bit of inspiration and a whole lot of hard work. You have to practice, practice and practice. In order to become a good Christian also, my dear children, requires a lot of hard work because of course, we were not born as good Christians from a mother's womb. No one becomes a saint overnight. You have to practice very hard at becoming a good Christian. And that is what, my dear children, the season of Lent is all about. These 40 days that have been given to us. It is a time when we practice becoming better in our relationship with God, at casting away sin and putting on good qualities that can help us to become good Christians and loving children in the eyes of God. And therefore, let us look now during this program and a few ways in which we can use the season of Lent so fruitfully in order to come close to God and to become better so that on the day of Easter, when Easter arrives, we can proudly say to God that I am your beloved son, I am your beloved daughter. Now, what is Lent and what are the traditional ways in which we usually observe the season of Lent? Let's find out through song, shall we? So we have now the children of St. Teresa of the Child Jesus Church, Iroli, who call themselves the Treasers Musical Roses and in a very nice, simple and beautiful song, they are going to tell us what Lent is all about and how we are called to follow it. Forty days of sacrifice, being super extra nice, this is Lent, this is Lent. So my dear children, we just saw in this video the three basic or traditional ways in which Lent is usually followed. That is with fasting, prayer and almsgiving. Let's look at the first one of these, that is fasting. As you know, my dear children, there are many adults who give up on non-vegetarian food, meat, eggs, etc. during the 40 days of Lent. There are others who fast, they do not eat at all during the Fridays of Lent, maybe another additional day such as Wednesdays. And even though children like you and even I have a little child inside of me are not really expected to not eat food in that sense during the season of Lent. But I know of many children who give up some of their favorite foods during these 40 days as their offering of love to Jesus. So for example, they'll give up on pizza or pastas or chocolates or soft drinks for example. Uh, during the season of Lent, they will not have these things for 40 days and they do it with great determination. But my dear children, is Lent or is fasting really just about food? What is fasting? Fasting just means you go without something for a little while. God wants to have a relationship with you. It's super important to Him. So let's focus on God right now. Oh, your friend wants to talk to you. Oh look, your food is ready. You 
probably want to play that, right? Focusing on God is difficult when there are distractions. Fasting is when you cut out distractions so you can focus on God. And God wants to focus on you too, because you matter so much to Him. So you see, my dear children, that fasting may not necessarily be from food. We can also fast from other things. For example, fasting from watching television or playing video games or spending too much time on your cell phone. Or maybe more importantly, fasting from negative qualities. For example, fasting from using unkind and rude words for other people. Fasting from laziness. Fasting from being disobedient towards your parents and teachers. Fa fasting from fighting and arguing. And I think, my dear children, these are the things that God is more concerned with. And so therefore, take some time to think about all the negative qualities in yourself and offer them up in prayer to God. And while you are praying, my dear children, ask God to give you the courage and strength to be able to fast from all these negative tendencies during the season of Lent. And I'm sure you will be very, very happy. Now, my dear children, you know that we celebrate the season of Lent for 40 days. But why 40? Have you thought about where this number comes from? Well. 40 is a very important number in the Bible. In the Old Testament, Noah along with his family and all the animals, they spent 40 days and nights in the ark while the floods ravaged the earth. Then you have the Israelites after they have been liberated from slavery in Egypt by God to the intervention of Moses. They spent 40 years journeying through the desert before they reached the promised land. And finally, in the New Testament, my dear children, Jesus spends 40 days and nights in the desert praying and fasting before he can begin his public ministry, teaching, preaching and healing. And therefore, like Jesus, my dear children, we too spend this time of penance for 40 days during the season of Lent so that we too can come close to God before we celebrate the mysteries of Holy Week, that is Monday, Thursday, Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Now, you know, my dear children, that while Jesus was in the desert, he was tempted many times by the devil. But Jesus managed to resist all the temptations that the devil threw to him. So let us see in this little video now, what are the temptations or what are the different ways in which the devil tempted Jesus while he was in the desert? And how did Jesus manage to evade all these temptations? And maybe there'll be a lesson for all of us as well. Hey everybody, it's time for a Bible story. Today we'll be talking about when Satan, or the devil, tempted Jesus in the wilderness. Jesus was talking to the devil like the devil? Yeah, that's the one. One day, the devil came to tempt Jesus. He wanted to trick Jesus into sinning. Are you kidding me? The devil think he was just going to outsmart Jesus? He just wanted to trick Jesus? Yeah, it's in the Bible. Jesus lived a perfect life, but he was human, just like you and me. So he was tempted to do things. Huh, weird. All right, well, tell me the story then. Jesus was in the wilderness. What was he doing there? Like camping, napping, snacking, making s'mores by the fire, Jesus style? No, no s'mores. Jesus was in the wilderness to be alone with God. He was there for 40 days praying and fasting. Fasting? What's that? Like running super fast? Watch this. I bet Jesus was the fastest kid in his class. What? No, I mean, I don't know. He was just a regular guy who also happened to be God. When the Bible says he was fasting, it means that he didn't eat any food for those 40 days. No food for 40 days? That's like over a month. I can't even go like 40 minutes without food. Why would he do that? Jesus was taking that time, the time you usually use to eat, to get closer to God and pray. So now we know what Jesus was tempted to do. Tempted to eat some dinner. After 40 days, the devil showed up in the wilderness and started talking to Jesus. That's freaky. It's okay. Jesus wasn't scared of him. The devil knew Jesus hadn't eaten any food for a long time. So he said to Jesus, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. Oh man, love bread. Can Jesus do that? He sure could. And he was really hungry. I bet bread sounded so good to him, but it was more important to him what the Bible says. So he told the devil no and used God's word to do it. He said, the Bible says people should not live on bread alone, but by every word that God says. Well, obviously you can't live on just bread, Hannah. You need pizza, cheeseburgers, mac and cheese, cake, ice cream, and a fruit. Yes, a fruit. 
earth is good. But that's not what he meant. He meant we can't survive with just food. We need the word of God, the Bible, to keep our spirits fed. Huh, that makes sense. Well, good job, Jesus. You really showed him. The devil wasn't done. He had another way to tempt Jesus. Oh, no. The devil took Jesus up to a really high place in the city and said to Jesus, If you are the Son of God, jump off this building because the Bible says God will tell his angels to protect you. They'll catch you with their hands so your foot won't even hit the ground. Hold up, why does he keep saying, if you're the son of God? It's Jesus, obviously he's the son of God. Yes, but the devil is challenging him. It's kind of like he's saying, well, prove it. Well, why doesn't Jesus just show him who's boss and proves it? If the Bible says angels will catch him, just jump off the roof and let him catch him. You know, if someone were to challenge me to do something I knew I could do, you bet I would do it. Well, Jesus might have wanted to prove it, but the devil was trying to trick him into doing something he wasn't supposed to do. But the devil said something that's in the Bible. Like I said, he was trying to trick Jesus. So Jesus said no and told him, the Bible says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. The devil was trying to trick Jesus into testing God. Yes, there are angels to protect us, but we aren't supposed to do something dangerous just to see if God is telling the truth. Uh, yeah, well, when you say it like that, it doesn't really seem like a good idea anymore. Nope. All right, Jesus, two for two. And the devil had one more temptation up his sleeve. What now? The devil took Jesus up to a tall mountain so he could see all the kingdoms of the world. It must have been like a really tall mountain. Then the devil said, I will give all of this to you. All you have to do is bow down and worship me. Ugh, gross. That sounds like a terrible idea. How would that even tempt Jesus? Well, Jesus knew that the world did belong to the devil because Adam and Eve sinned. And there was a plan for Jesus to get it back, but it meant dying on the cross. So the devil was telling him, if you do this, it would be all yours without you having to die. It's like, what would you do for a million dollars? But instead, what would you do so you don't have to die on the cross? Oh man, that one's kind of a toughie. Well, what did Jesus do? Then Jesus said, the Bible says, worship God only and only serve him. So the devil left. He couldn't get Jesus to sin. Of course he couldn't. My boy Jesus can't put nothing on him. Okay, that's enough of that. The end. It's time for an action song. Now this song is presented to you by the children of St. Francis Xavier Church, the Bull. And the song is titled, Show Me Your Ways, O Lord. This is so apt for the season of Lent because during this Lenten season, we are asking the Lord in prayer, Lord, show me the path that you want me to follow during this season so that I can come closer to closer to you each day. So therefore, my dear children, let's stand up and participate in this beautiful action song, Show Me Your Ways, O Lord.
My dear children, every time the season of Lent approaches, a common question that is asked to each one of us is, what are you going to give up this Lent? This is a common question which is uppermost in our minds. What am I going to sacrifice this Lent as my offering to Jesus? And it's completely natural to think of it this way. But my dear children, like Pope Francis says, it's not just important to give up something for Lent, but it is also important to put on something new, to imbibe a new habit as a virtue which would be pleasing to God. And that's something that I want each one of us to think about, my dear children, before we begin the season of Lent. During these 40 days, what is it that I'm going to sacrifice? What am I going to give up? But at the same time, is there some good habit or virtue that I can imbibe this Lent, put on myself so that it becomes a part and parcel of me in the days and months ahead? Now, therefore, let's listen to what these children have to say about what they are going to give up during Lent and what are they going to put on during the season of Lent. This Lent, I would like to give up my wrong attitude towards others and lessen my screen time. Being obedient to my parents and elders and talking to Jesus and listening to Him. This Lent, I will give up eating chicken and read a passage from the Bible every day. I will reduce watching my mobile phone this Lent. I will try not to trouble my elders. This Lent, I will give up eating chocolate and water the plants every day. In the season of Lent, we must check and give up what is evil and what is wrong by the help of the Holy Spirit. Now, I have this problem that I get angry and my brother real quick. But I got to know but in, in the past that he has been hurting me every time and I have not forgiven him. So this year on a plan, I will be given up unforgiveness to, towards my brother. And yes, I will combine it with a little bit of sacrifice and give up my favorite ch cherries and chicken nuggets. I love them so very much, but it's okay. Lent is the time we prepare for Easter. This Lent, I will give up on being disobedient and I will listen to my parents and grandparents. I'll also make Jesus a part of everything I do because with him we have everything. Without him we have nothing. This Lent 2022 I would like to give up use of social media. In this season of Lent, I want to receive the Holy Spirit's power to spend time speaking with Jesus God about everything, to share with others my belongings, to be careful not to hurt others by what I do and say, and to love Jesus, not the just a season of Lent, but every day. I will sacrifice some of my favorite food and give it to the street children. Lent is a time of repentance, fasting and preparation for the coming of Easter. It is a time of self-examination and reflection. Avoiding television, screen time and junk food. Giving up my favorite chocolates and ice creams. Stop complaining. Walk out daily to take care of my body God gave me. Say three good things to my parents daily. Collecting and giving the needy 40 things for 40 days. Learning a prayer from the Bible. Example Psalm 91. Prayer for protection. This length I will give up on sweets and do at least one good deed every day. This length I will give up eating chocolates. This length I will try my best not to be naughty. 
Now, my dear children, I'm sure that some of you all are following a Lenten calendar during these days, okay? Something like this. It may have been shared with you by your Sunday school teachers or by your parish church and these Lenten calendars have got beautiful little activities that you can do every day to help you grow spiritually during the season of Lent. Now, I'm going to propose to you one more beautiful activity that will help you tremendously if you follow this during all the days of Lent, okay? And I call this activity my four cups of Lent. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now, as you can see, I've got four cups here in front of me. Now, these are just very simple paper cups. Okay. You can use any cups that you have at home for identical cups like this. Now, what's the idea? You have to label each of these four cups. Okay. Now, what's the first cup? The first cup is my give up cup. Okay. So, you need to have just write with a pen like this. You take a marker pen or a sketch pen. And you write the words give up boldly on uh, the cup over here. Okay, this is the first cup, give up. Now, what are you giving up? In this cup, you need to put in all these things that you are going to give up during the season of Lent. Okay, so the idea is that every day you give up something, you make some sacrifice. Okay, and you write it down on a piece of paper every day and then you drop it into the cup at the end of the day. Okay, for example, what are the things that we can give up? We can give up, for example, TV and cartoons or you can give up chocolates or video games or playing with your friends or maybe drinking soft drinks or ice cream. So every day you make one sacrifice, you give up something and you drop this piece of paper. You write it on a piece of paper and you drop it in your give up cup. Okay, it's that simple. Now, what's the next cup? I'm sure that you all are very curious to know what the names of these four cups are. So the next cup is your fill up cup. Okay, so it's called the fill up cup. You just write fill up on this cup and you prepare it, okay? Now, what's your fill up cup? Just as it is necessary, my dear children, to give up certain things during the season of Lent, to empty ourselves of our negative tendencies, our sinfulness, it is also equally important to fill ourselves with good things, with positive qualities, with virtues. And so, therefore, when you're emptying yourself with your give up cup, you also need to fill yourself with good things, okay? So, now, what are the good things that you can do? For example, you can read your Bible every day, you can help at home with the chores, help your parents, uh, you can watch a Bible video on YouTube every day, you can pray the rosary with your family, you can spend some time in personal prayer or helping out someone in need. So every day you do one good deed and you write it on a piece of paper and you drop it in your fill up cup. Okay, now, so this is the give up cup and the fill up cup. The next two cups are the spiritual cups. Okay. The third cup is the My Bible cup and you write My Bible on this cup in bold letters and you have this cup with you. That's the third cup, which is the My Bible cup. Now, what's the idea behind this cup? The idea is that, my dear children, we need to really get to know our Bible. We need to know the stories of the Bible. So every day you read one story from your Bible. Okay, you read one passage of scripture or you read one nice story from the Bible and you write it on a piece of paper which story you have read for the day and you put it in this cup so it can be the story of jonah it can be the story of daniel it can be the story of one of the parables that jesus said in the new testament so you can write the story the name of the story on a piece of paper and every day you read a little part of your bible you write it down on this paper and you drop it in the cup okay now the final cup is the pray for cup okay this is the pray for cup over here that's the final cup in this cup, my dear children, every day we need to pray for someone. Pray for someone while you are praying, either with your family or when you are praying alone. Pray for someone in your life and write down that intention on a piece of paper and drop it in the cup. So who all can we pray for? We can pray for our parents, we can pray for our brothers and sisters, we can pray for our friends, for our teachers, for our godparents. But more importantly, we can pray for those who are sick, for those who are in need, for those who are suffering in some way. Maybe for some problems that are going around in your community or in your area or at the world at large. Now, we have the COVID-19 pandemic going on. Maybe we can pray for all the people who are suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic. We can pray for the government and the authorities, the doctors and the nurses who are fighting to curb the spread of this disease. You know, there are so many things that we can pray for, especially during this COVID-19 time. Okay, so every day make one intention, one prayer, write it on this piece of paper and drop it in your cup. So my dear children, these are the four cups. You have the give up cup, the fill up cup, my Bible and pray for. Okay, and these are four wonderful cups. And if every day you drop one piece of paper in each cup, one drop in the, of every day in each of these cups, at the end of the Lenten season, you will have all these four cups overflowing. And what a beautiful sight that you have managed to fill all these four cups during the 40 days of Lent. 
And at the end of the 40 days, as we approach Easter Sunday, you can click a picture of all these four cups. So you can even share these four cups with maybe your Sunday school teacher, maybe with the priest in your parish or with your friends. You can take a, click a picture of these four cups and share it with all your near and dear ones. And I'm sure you're going to be very happy and thrilled. And all those around you are also going to be very happy that you performed this wonderful Lenten exercise during the season of Lent. So remember, my four cups of Lent, simple four paper cups, you can even decorate it and color it, you know, draw something on it, stick stickers on it and make it attractive and beautiful and perform these tasks for the 40 days of Lent. So my dear children, we are almost towards the end of the program, but let's not end before we have an action song, because I know that's what you look forward the most to. So here are Teresa's Musical Roses once again with a very beautiful action song and they have a wonderful Lenten message for you and me. And the message is, be more like Jesus. What a wonderful message, isn't it? So therefore, let's all stand and participate in this beautiful action song. The words are there below on your screen so that you can sing along and follow the actions that these children are doing on screen. Let's sing together, be more like Jesus. Okay, wasn't that such a beautiful action song? Now don't go away just yet because we have now a wonderful prayer service conducted by the children of St. Joseph Church, Vicroli. It's a very beautiful, a short prayer service, not more than 10 minutes and so creatively done by these children. As we have just discussed, prayer is a very important pillar of the season of Lent. And so therefore, my dear children, let's spend these 10 minutes praying to our Heavenly Father. And I guarantee you that it's so much fun that you won't even feel that you are praying. It's been done so well. So let's take these 10 minutes and participate in this beautiful prayer service being conducted by the children of St. Joseph's Church, Vicroli. Welcome friends. During the lockdown, we have been online most of the time to get in touch with the world around us. In the process, we have lost connectivity with the real people around and we may have been disconnected from God. Today, Let's get in line with God's ways of love, joy and forgiveness and connect with our family and friends 
the way God wants us to. Let's turn on the silent mode in our hearts as we begin chatting with God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, your sweat has turned into blood. What's the matter? I am deeply grieved because my passion will begin soon. I am praying to the Heavenly Father to let the cup of suffering pass by me. Yet, not my will, but His will be done. Jesus, what about your disciples? Were they not supposed to be praying with you? Yes, but their eyes are heavy with sleep. Jesus, we would like to pray with you. Sure. Come on friends, let us join Jesus in prayer. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. He went a little further on, threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if possible, he might not have to go through that time of suffering. Father, he prayed, My Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was about to undergo the most difficult struggle of his life, the crucifixion. But he did not let fear get into him. He prayed for strength to do his Father's will. And Jesus' example must be a comfort to us. Prayer was a way of life for Jesus. It was not pray to get what he wanted, but to do his father's will. Jesus not only prayed, but he lived to do God's will. In the Our Father, he taught us, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. If we truly trust God, we have the strength to give up our wants and fears and believe that His will is right and the very best thing for us.
scolding from parents makes me smile when I realize that I am corrected because they care for me. When I don't have shoes, clothes, cell phones like other friends, I am thought to be satisfied with what I have. When a friend does not talk to me, I realize the importance of a good friend. When I'm sick, I learn how important it is to be healthy. When my favorite pastas, pizzas, burgers are not on the table, I learn to be thankful for the nutritious food that I get every day. And this is the human cross bonfires. These are the daily crosses of our life. Each one of them reminds us to pray to God with full trust. No cross is too heavy because our Saviour shares our cross. Relying on Jesus, let's sing this song. Keep us apart. True. 
raised to bend Though straight and tall So must we To others fall Long have I waited for your coming Home to me and living Deeply on you With tenderness, you shall know. Long have I waited for your coming home to me and living deeply on you, life on you, life. Long have I waited for your coming home to me and living. So my dear children, we come to the end of this video presentation on the season of Lent. I want to wish all of you all a very happy and holy season of Lent. There are so many activities and ideas that have been suggested during the course of this video and I hope that all of us can uh, imbibe some of these things, can practice some of these things so that this Lent really becomes a meaningful season for all of us so that we adequately prepare ourselves for Holy Week. And therefore my dear children, God bless, thank you for watching this video and wish you a happy and holy season of Lent.